this one's going on because I'm feeling very festive and very deer heady, and you'll see why in just a minute. All right, so um, a reminder, uh, starting Monday, we were, are going to start our uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. We're gonna start a little earlier this year, give everybody a little break. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what's gonna be on sale, you're gonna have to check it out, but it's going to start on Monday. So then we're going to have all kinds of other fun stuff going on and there may be different things on sale on different days. Just gonna have to keep checking back. All right, so now, I love my little, I love my little deer antlers. These make me so ha happy. And yes, I said antlers today. I couldn't remember the word antlers yesterday. Kept saying horns. Okay, so we're gonna flip the camera down and we're gonna go right into our projects. Kidoki. Now, let's move this and let me zoom in just a little. That's not what I wanted. Come on, clear. You know, you touch stuff. I don't, oh, geez, I flipped it around. Sorry, everybody, you're staring at the light. Couldn't figure out what you were looking at. And it's going to do it again because I keep hitting the wrong thing with my finger. It's going to be one of those lives. I'm sorry, folks. All righty, let me make sure I've got the, sorry, you can get my hand over the camera. I'm gonna turn the light up on here as bright as possible so that you get as much light on this surface. Okay, so uh, you saw some of the cast pieces yesterday, so I'm gonna sh share with you first the molds. Um, I get these off of Amazon, I get them at Michael's, I get them wherever they happen to be. So this one happens to be an octopus ice cube tray that I picked up in Cape Cod this summer. I have these deer ones that I got off of Amazon. Uh, I have these little smiley faces or little sleeping faces, moon faces, um, that are, I got this, I wanna say, I think I got this one on Amazon too. Oh, good. I'm glad you got, you can see better. The light's good and bright. I've been working on it. I listened to you all. It's been a struggle finding good lighting for here. Sorry, that one had chunks of epoxy on it. So this one is all sorts of forest nymphy creatures, and that's where we get these faces from in that big mold. And then this guy, let me look up close. You can see his face comes out of here. And then there's smaller ones, you know, like this little guy is from here. So, but now you understand that these are so detailed, I had to do a little flash gilding on the face to make sure that the images were clear. But I also use these. These are flat ones that are great. You can pour stuff into these and they, are, they give you nice low relief pieces that you can uh, put on canvases and stuff. I have a couple like this. I had one that was like doll faces. It was kind of a little on the creepy side. Oh yeah, that's right back here. I have some of these, these are cameos. This one is body parts. <laughs> They're actually for casting dolls. Um, but uh, that would make actually kind of a wonderful creepy one for Halloween and have all the body parts tagged onto stuff. And so as you can see yesterday, we attached this one of those big faces to this and with the gilding you can actually make out the facial features better but now i have all these other ones left and i still by the way love my rudolph and i put these faces on i knew there was a reason i couldn't figure out what my thinking was once i flash gilded them they are all the sleeping children that rudolph is flying santa over to deliver presents it was it came out very sweet all right so now i have all of these other things left that i was doing so the first thing we're gonna do is turn one of our little octopi into one of these kind of darling little ornaments. Now, if you didn't know it was an octopus because you looked and saw that I had done a little flash gilding on the face, so you can see his eyes and mouth, this looks like a flower blossom. And I just thought these looked so cute, or you know, a, a flowery filigreed kind of bell. They're a little weighty. So I'm gonna show you how we got there. And I need to grab my wood block. I'm gonna slide that back. And we have a drill. Let's angle this better 
sorry for my hand over the lens. It's the, the hand that was free. So we have a wood block, I have a drill. This is an eighth inch drill bit. And we're gonna take one of our little octopus guys. Cover yours if you don't like noise. I like to come back up through the bottom just to clean out any little bit. <coughs> oh, I got a little dust. Sorry, folks. And so now we have a hole that goes from top to bottom. And while I'm sitting here with this out, I'm going to drill these other octopi that are sitting here, too. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong. I always thought octopi was the plural of octopus, but I was recently told wrong. I think I was wrong that it was like octopuses. And octopi is actually a singular. I don't know. I, I, I'll take my grammar and, and tenses and singular versus plurals any day. I didn't have a good grip on that one. This is why I want a drill press. I drill a lot of things like this. Okay, now we knock that down, clean all that stuff up. I'm gonna switch drill bits and we're gonna drill a couple other Faces. All right, where did my drill bits go? Did I clean? I clean them up so well. I put them back on the shelf. Hang on a sec. Every once in a while, I get tidying up, and I tidy up the things I need. Now these are going to require a much smaller drill bit. So I think this is. 564, so that's still a little bigger than I want. Sometimes getting my drill bits out of the container is uh, tough, because if I haven't used it, the first pulling it out, ugh, I did replace a bunch of drill bits because they got lost in the move. And <laughs> a year and a half ago, and uh, so some of the drill bits haven't been used since then. Okay, so I'm gonna take this guy and first we're gonna drill up here. And then we're gonna drill down here. And then I'm gonna figure out exactly what I want hanging with him. So I've got this wonderful face and now I need to pick a few accessory guys to go with him. Let's see. This, is, this guy's got a little bit of all the colors in him so I'm trying to pick a little bit of everything. So we got that one. Do that way and let's see what else am I gonna put on him kind of like that one okay that gives me my my guys Pay attention when you're drilling because if you do this the wrong way, 
you can crack your guys. You can crack them. So if you notice, I'm not being aggressive in my drilling. I'm just getting it done. Go a little slower, a little more carefully if you need to. All right, putting my drill to the side. So we'll work on the first ones that I've drilled. So since I drilled these three last, I think I'll show you what my ideas were for this. Now I have little clipped up pieces of wire. I thought I had like a whole spool of fine wire floating around and I was wrong, I didn't. So I solved that problem really simply. I had a string of these battery operated lights. Hey Charlie, we're making Christmas ornaments. So I had a string of these battery operated lights and you can see that it has, they have fine wire. Well, the connection broke. It's, these aren't generally repairable. They're not designed to be used more than once or twice, you know. I shouldn't say they're not designed to be used more than once or twice. They're not designed to be fixed. These bulbs don't come out. They can't be replaced. There's no fuse. You just got what you got. So I pull them apart and make use of the wire. It's pretty gold wire. It'll work just fine for what I've got in mind. So the first thing I'm going to do is take some of the wire and tie it, put it in the back here through the back and I'm going to loop these two together. And then, okay, so I twisted them together. So I gotta get into the, the camera range so you can see what I'm doing. I took the wire, I looped it together so that that would hang like that but I've got to make this back piece secure. So I've twisted it and then I'm coming back down on the wire and twisting that wire back on itself so that this little loop is a lot more secure. Now I can leave it rounded like that, but I also know that it's going to get squished over the years in packing. So I plan for that too. It'll look just as cute if the, once the wire flattens out, which it will over time. And then I'm gonna take another piece of wire and that little blob right there, that's the light. So I'm gonna take my little tiny wire snippers and they sort of connect to this and they just basically get a charge and light up. I'm just going to clip this off. I'm being careful how I clip it because I don't want to cut through the wire that I need. And let's see, I can get a little more off of there. Oh. <laughs> I get it that this is a pain, and if you have wi wire handy, use another piece of wire. I tend, I, I'm just cannibalizing what I have on hand to make my own life a little easier. I don't think I'm gonna do that one. I think I'm gonna do, I, think I want another little, little tiny face. It's a little too tiny. There's that one, or there's that one. That one's the best choice. So I'm gonna pull my drill back up, grab my block of wood wherever I put it. See, that happens. In the middle of making, I realized that's not exactly what I was hoping for, so we're gonna change it up. All right, there's my little face. Come on. There we go. Okay. And again, like I did with the other one, I'm going to do a little twist with the wire. 
and then come back. Oops, I didn't twist it quite enough. Need a couple twists just to make sure it's locked in. And then you come back. I'm gonna shorten this just to make it easier for myself because the longer pieces are a lot more work to work through. See, I can bring the other piece through, but I, man, that's it's just a bigger pain to twist it that way. I prefer the piece a little shorter. Although this one's working all right. I'll have to trim the end anyway. And I always try to move where I knotted up the wire up into the top of the loop and behind so you don't see it so much. But look how cute that came out. And then I'll put a piece of gold or silver thread through it just to make so it can be hung on the tree. But look how cute that came out. I really like that. That makes me happy. All right, we're going to do an octopus now. We got our octopus, he was drilled through. So now I have silver embroidery floss. A lot of it all over the place. And I'm gonna show you how I do this. First of all, this would normally, if I had them here in the studio, I would use something like um, a, a needlepoint needle or an embroidery needle, something long, and just thread that through. I don't happen to have that here, so I'm taking a piece of tape, laying it sticky side up once I can get my fingers unattached from it. I'm going to take my thread or floss, stick it to the tape. Oops, that's not the way I wanted that to stick. I've only been doing this all day, so of course now that I'm doing it on camera, it's not gonna do it all the right way. I'm folding the tape in half. Okay, now let's see where I put my scissors, because they were here in the middle of my messies. And I've moved them, so hang on a sec. I have 50 pairs of scissors and not one near me when I need them. Okay, so I've now created sort of what looks like a tape flag. And this is, this is just a hack. If you have something easier to do this with, get it. This is a pain in the neck for me to do it this way. But it does work when I don't have what I need right here with me. So I'm basically creating what looks like a needle or a big, you know, I'm like an aglet for a sneaker. This is how you thread your laces through your sneakers with a piece of plastic wrapped around the end of a piece of lace. And Sorry, I wanted to pay attention to how I was cutting. Okay, and I even kind of sharpened it down to a little needle tip. So I'm gonna take this end now, shove it through, and pull it out. Now I'm gonna leave that sticking out there and before I go, <laughs> I've learned this the hard way now because I made myself a little crazy trying to figure this one out before. Now I'm gonna take another piece of tape, stick it right there and fold over again. Now, Trim my thread right there. That'll help it stay together. And since I know I'm gonna have to do this again, before I even move that piece of embroidery thread, or I could have just simply cut this in half, uh, I'm putting a piece of tape on the end of this so it doesn't unwind. 
and folding it over. Now I'm ready for the next one. I'm going to take this one, do exactly what I did with the other one, trim it way, way, way thin. Okay, stop sticking to me. Give myself that little bit of a needle tip on this and feed it through a second time. Let's see if I made this thing narrow enough to get all the way through. Nope, I need to trim it just a little more. I made it too wide. Those weren't going through quite that easily. I'm going to have to work it a little bit. Make it narrower. It's not like I didn't do that before and it worked just fine. needed to get the other end through so I could pull. There we go. And this is peel some of this tape back. Now I could take all the tape off, which would be simplest, but then I have all of these threads breaking apart and I still have to knot it. So, so I don't accidentally have it pull back through. I stick something, you could stick a stick. This just happens to be a zip tie that I had on hand. And now I can tie the knots so it won't go flying out. And honestly, this is the hardest part, my fingers feel like I have giant's fingers when I do this. Okay, now I can pull that off. I've gotten it through once. I'm going to get those odd little threads that are going to want to pull. Okay, one more time. This is the only part I hate. I hate that the embroidery floss splits like this. When I'm trying to do it, it makes me cuckoo. I'm gonna get a little piece of tape and wrap, wrap it around the end here because it's going to constantly fray and split while I'm doing this. That's better. Of course, my fingers haven't gotten any smaller. So it's not 100% effective. And I just pulled it off because I did it wrong. point of doing this is to place one knot on top of the other so then it becomes hard to pull it through the bottom here and I just did the dumb thing well I'm glad you all watched me just waste a whole lot of time because I just pulled that out and I don't have any way to hook it back through so we're gonna redo that good thing I taped off this end
like, oh, look, I've got it. It's fine. Yes, you're so smart, Maury. <laughs> I bet you all want to be like me. Okay. Back through the hole. Just a second, I want one more tool. Make my own life a little easier. Got a little picker here too. Just use this to help shove this down through. That worked. That's just what I needed. Another piece of tape. I think I'll cut this a little longer this time, make my own life a little simpler. This will make just make it simpler instead of fighting against it. And there they are. Both are through. All right, I've got the zip tie through here again, so hopefully I won't screw this up a second time. I don't know though. <laughs> I'm really good at making messes and making mistakes, so who knows what I'll do the second time through. Okay, there's a piece of tape that just came undone. Come on, all of you guys in through so I can tie the knot. One knot. Now this doesn't happen with everything. You don't need to tape every kinds of every kind of thing you have. Skinny ribbons don't do this. It's embroidery floss because it's meant to separate for embroidery. Which means then when I use it for anything else, I have to accommodate the fact that it was not designed for the purpose I'm using it. There we go, now we're getting it tied right. Figured the first one had to go really wrong so you could see me struggle. Okay, now I can pull the thread down. I can pull that up. Trim that little extra bit off. Actually, before I trim it off, let me find my little basket of Stuff, or my little bag of stuff, I should say. All those little things that I got at Michael's, I just tend to keep in a little bag. Because um, it's way easier to control it, keep it from flying all over the place. Okay, this is what I needed to do now. I'm going to split this up again. Again, I'm back with the tape. And this is just so that when I go to tie it again, I'm not having that, all those threads fray everywhere and make me nuts. And let's face it, it doesn't take much to make me a little on the nutty side. So I don't need to help the process. I can't believe I just did that. I pulled, literally pulled that through. Oh my God. 
I am so annoyed at myself now. Well, tomorrow I will come back and I will, because I've done this twice now while you watched. So tomorrow I'll come back with a needle or I will grab a tool and start pushing it back through. I'm just so annoyed that I did that, even though I had the, the thingy. And clearly I've done it before and it was fine. I've just managed to do it wrong twice on camera, so yay for me. Okay, let me finish tying this together and let's see if I can reconstitute this. Come on, off of my finger. fighting with the thread, obviously. Okay, so we are well and truly secured on there. And then, now I've just got it all twisted everywhere. Okay. Wish me luck. Let's see if I can get this pushed back up through the hole. Because I'm feeling ever so small. Oh, well, we're going <laughs> to... Tape has gotten me through everything else on this, so let's have it help me this time. And we're gonna use the picker stick to get it through. Okay. Trim it down a little more. This, you know, this is this is part of doing stuff like this. Things sometimes go wrong. Come on, go in. And it worked. Okay, so the idea was that I get that tied up there. We have a little piece of mistletoe dangling, which is working just fine. This time I'm putting this and latching it so uh, it doesn't pull back on me. Now this one, I shoved the mistletoe all the way up to the hole in here. This one, I'm leaving it dangling a little bit, and I just need a little bit of ribbon. Time I do something small like this, it feels, how the heck did that happen? That was peculiar, the most peculiar bow I've tied in a long time. Maybe if I turn it this way, I'll get it right. There we go. Folks, my fingers are stiff today. And when the fingers are stiff, there's the bow tying is awkward. Especially when it's little bows. There we go. So we have our little 
mistletoe octopus. Now I'll clean up all these loose ribbon, uh, little loose fibers, and it'll look much tidier. But again, there's another idea for an ornament. We have our blue guy. We have a little blue face. So we can do this in a couple ways, and I think we're gonna go do wire on this because that makes more sense than trying to fight the uh, embroidery floss for this. Okay, I'm gonna take, I gotta find the end of this. I had it, clipping from it. I know it's there. a longer piece here, shall we? And let's open that up there. Come on, split apart. So I'm pulling that apart. Now one side will always come clean with no bulbs on it and the other one will have all the little the little lights, those can get clipped off, but we're gonna use the clean side because it's simpler. Actually, I think the way I wanna do this is I'm gonna go do that. Gonna end up looking like the octopus gave birth to this, but okay. I'm so it's a little odd. I'm good with that. And I'm shoving both ends back up through the hole that I created. And what I want to do is just twist this one a couple times. Just gonna create a little, I want that to hang down a little more. Okay, so I'm creating my little wire loop up top because I don't, you know, clearly I don't want it to come apart. So I'm just gonna do this. Now I can jazz this up with some uh, ribbon. I can uh, put some little holly bits on there, but just in itself, it's kind of cool looking. You don't really know what it is. It looks a little like a flower, but we've got a little octopus and a little hanging face. It's just kind of cool. So, you know, there's lots of options and ideas of how you can handle these things. All right, let's flip this up. All righty. So I think we've covered everything. I just wanted to share with you the molds. Let me back up. You don't need to see me up that close. I'm cute, but not that cute. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I don't even believe myself when I say that silly stuff. So these cool molds, molds the Amazon, deer, I mean, the deer heads and all these faces and stuff. You, but if, you can get them on Amazon, but look up, also look up silicone um, ice cube trays because they come in heart shapes, they come in dog faces and cats and all kinds of stuff. You don't, you don't have to have an octopus, so there's lots of options. And then you can see there's lots of ways to use them. So if you're doing something with silicone pour and you have leftovers, you know, stick with it, keep them, use it into the molds, and then you can create something new from the molds that you created. All right, everybody, it is a little before 4.30. It's been a great Saturday afternoon here with you all. I hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you when we're back open on Tuesday. Keep your eyes on this page. We will be announcing 
the sales. We will be telling you if there's something new that's on sale for that day. And we're going to start our Black Friday week starting Monday. All right, everybody, have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.